Well, see, so you mentioned Wells Fargo, which is actually timely on this executive compensation problem, because yeah. in, the, in the midst of this scandal, you had this scheme where basically people were compensated based on how many accounts they opened, among other right. things. And it created this huge incentive for employees to open accounts, whether they were real or fake. And Absolutely. they would open basically a bunch of phantom accounts. And usually the justification was that it was, you know, no difference to the customers at all, but occasionally they did get charged fees or certain things like this for accounts they didn't want. But you had... It, in fact, very good uh, account growth and customer growth, putting all this sales pressure on people. It was like plan A in the branches was do real sales. Right. And they made the fake sales when they couldn't make the real sales. Right. So, that, so you still got a lot of these real sales. Right. The company did very well in retail banking. And then it ballooned into this enormous scandal when they figured out they'd done all of this. Yeah. And so with a, a few senior executives, a couple that, that got forced out, there was recently this big clawback of a lot of their yeah. pay. Yeah. And so I guess my question for you is, is this an example of executive compensation gone wrong, where you had people who got paid a lot for a long time time yep. for profits and, and positive indicators that were based on bad behavior, or is it an example of it working because, hey, you got these clawbacks and it showed that the system worked? Well, so it's definitely not an example, I think, of it working, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, clawbacks are nice, but they're not really solving the problem in a deep way. Right. I think it's a manifestation of the problem, which is uh, incentives gone crazy. You know, in part, economics is wonderful, not because of the behavioral stuff, but because we focus on incentives. Mm -hmm. And those are incentives that have just gone awry. Um, then it layers into culture and it gets even more complicated. But the first order lesson from Wells Fargo is a culture of driven by really, really what we call high powered incentives. You get an extra dollar, you get a big chunk of that. And that leads to all kinds of behavior, especially when it's at a very high frequency, very short horizons. If you do that over longer horizons, like, you know, let's say you have a 10 year or 20 year period, then it's okay because all these manipulations are harder to sustain for that long. But so I guess then the, the question going back to the principal agent problem is why did you have these incentives in the first place? You had them because, you know, for a branch manager or a branch employee, the incentive is obviously to sit there and not try too Absolutely. hard to sell unless you're, so this, the, the pay structure was intending to align the incentives of the principal and the agent and it went awry. Absolutely. Yeah. And in a way, you know, the principal agent problem is just ever present, right? I mean, we can solve it and we can kind of ameliorate it, but it is the problem. Right. It's not. We're not going to go back to a time when you work for yourself and I work for myself, unless the gig economy, you know, goes crazy and everybody's working for themselves. Mm -hmm. By and large, we're always going to have that separation of ownership and management, mm -hmm. and all we're trying to do is on the margins solve it a little bit, right? right. And it, but it's not a problem that goes away. Yeah. It's not a problem that goes away. In fact, you know, every relationship you have with a doctor or with a contractor, it is fundamentally the principal agent problem.